Completely. Thank you very much once again for joining us on this testimonial year. Been at the club for 10 years at Crusaders. I'm going to read some stats out for you, Paul, just I know you'll, you'll find this a bit embarrassing, but obviously 375 appearances for Crusaders, 178 goals, 118 assists, made your Crusaders debut in a 3-0 Europa League defeat to Rosenberg on the 5th of July 2012. And I scored a total of seven hat-tricks for Crusaders, two against your former club card and one against one point. One apiece then at Ballon Mallor, Cliftonville and Glenavon. That's pretty incredible in your time here. I want to start off going back probably all those years. I know you've done lots of podcasts and everybody asks you the same question, but how does it feel standing here now or sitting here now, Paul, and looking back at your career with Crusaders first and foremost? Um, it's a bit strange and surreal because I'm still so heavily involved in the club, you know, I'm still playing and um, our attention always is for the season ahead and, and our expectations for what lies ahead and what we want to achieve. So to start trying to reflect on maybe what's happened in the past and what you've maybe achieved individually is it's a bit weird because it's never happened before. So it's funny to always be giving them sort of stats and, and uh, them sort of uh, figures that you're sort of achieving. but probably like every other player in the league that they don't actually think about it until they've completely hung up their boots and and start to reflect on what they've achieved um so i'm trying not to get carried away with anything that's maybe might sound quite nice of what i've done because it's not about what you've done it's what you're going to do um so there's still plenty that i want to do and, and achieve with the club so for the time being i'll just focus on that and then maybe when the when the boots do get hung up i'll i'll have a wee giggle at maybe what was achieved i want to remind you back maybe in the early days I think personally the one that comes to mind is the, the red card against Cliftonville and it was the League Cup final I want to go back to that kind of early beginnings Paul and how maybe you've matured into the game matured at Crusaders and how maybe your, your games changed but was that an area back then that maybe was, was spoken about in the, the, the Mr Angry maybe that came out now again that, that conversation happens regularly so it's <laughs> Still. It happened last week, <laughs> so I don't think it's going to ever change. The gaffer keeps telling me I think I would change by now, but you know, you're everyone's a very different character on and off the pitch, and whether you're the most horrible human being on it, um, I'm, it's very often the case that you're actually the nice person off it. And Michael Galt's a perfect example of it. I remember when when we played against him, he was just the nastiest piece of work on the pitch, and when I heard he was joining us, I, I was dreading it, but he. You know, within months, I was helping him move house and, and giving him a hand outside of football, and he was the nicest guy I've ever met. So, you know, personalities on the pitch certainly don't reflect the true the true character off. So, yeah, that that's just a part of my game uh, that's very, very hard to get out of. And um, hopefully the gaffer can learn to accept a couple of wee cheeky yellow cards thrown there. Not as many reds over the years, as you say. Probably matured a little bit over the last 10 years, but... You know, some people play with a wee bit of feistiness and, and that, that's what makes their game what it is and I'm quite proud of that wee cheeky record. Going back, Paul, to the, to the early days of your career and probably that, that spell at Cliftonville, I know you've spoke a few times about the, the break in football. Take me back there and, and in some way do you look back on that? Obviously, you know, the great seasons that you had with Gavin White on the team and he obviously went on to do great things and still is. Do you look back at that and maybe say, what if, and if I kept playing, could I have maybe reached those heights or, or got a move across the water? Uh, look, I, I, it's very hard to even start considering what, you know, the ifs and buts and what ifs, but, um, you know, it's not just what you achieve in football, it's what you achieve in life and, you know, whether people say it's unfortunate or fortunate, I certainly say very fortunate. I was blessed to have a child quite young and my path went the way it was meant to go. So when you reflect at where you're at now compared to where you're at 10 years ago and having taken the break and went into further education and, and work and how life's planned out with you know a marriage and four children, well, fourth on the way, and um, the success that we've had on the pitch, you know, being a part of the success with the club, sometimes that's just how it's meant to be and, and you can't have any regrets around what could have been because for talk's sake if someone goes across the water and gets to play at League One or Championship level or even Premiership level yes certainly the money would be nice but you know with Crusaders you get to play in Champions League Europa League year in year out play against Rosenberg Copenhagen um, Wolves you know the the list goes on I think we've travelled most of Europe with, with, with the club and them experiences are, are, are priceless and 
they've achieved that and, and been blessed to go where we've gone over the 10 years that I've been here. You, you couldn't possibly dream of, of anything better than that. It's been fantastic. And just, just looking at, at your career and obviously you know, we've been in a full CV and those magic nights that you've given us, but what's the relationship with you and the fans, Paul, like, and, and maybe do you have a message for those who have came down and pay their money and are watching? And, I know from being in the stands you, you can feel the energy that you, that you give the fans, but what's our relationship been like over the years? To be completely honest, I, I'm not a big social media user. I'm, you know, I genuinely am very family oriented and, you know, if, I, I, once I leave football, I tend to be at either work or, or with the family and playing with the kids and going out and going to the zoo and just having a bit of fun with the family. So I never really get caught up in the whole, um, you know, what's it like with the relationship and the rapport. All I know is I love the fans. They're legendary on my end. From what I perceive of them is is so such great gratitude because you hear them singing year in, year out, and they all have their songs for each player. But... I adore my song and I'm very, very grateful. No, definitely not. I would break, I'd break a camera or something singing that. Um, you know, when someone, when, when a group of people and a, sele a selection of supporters make up a song for you, it's, it's the most flattering and, and most respectful thing that could be ever given to someone. And to hear people singing, especially against Linfield and Cliftonville where you're, where you're winning and it's a full crowd and you have 3,000 and the atmosphere is electric and they're sitting there singing the song, rubbing salt into the wounds of the opposition. It's, um, it's a very special feeling. So all I can do is express my gratitude to the supporters because from day one that I've joined, they've been so welcoming. They're very, very accommodating and, and they give you a lot of, lot of confidence and, and appreciation, which is always really nice. And we're obviously a few weeks away from another new season for you. you know, the team's been in for a number of weeks now. We've been in couple of friendlies that's happened and we do off now looking forward to the, the game at Windsor Park against Linfield to, to kick start the new season. What's it like in Paul Heatley's mind now going into another new season with Crusaders and, and talk to me about the hunger and the desire that's still within? Yeah, I mean, look, once the hunger and desire leaves, you, you should just stop playing, you know, regardless of your age. If you're, if you're 21 and you're not feeling the electricity running through your veins, just ready to get stuck in and win this game and do whatever you have to do to win it, then there's no point playing. You know, so certainly age doesn't come into any of that. It's um, it'll never leave you if you're a true player. You just want to be involved in as big a game as possible and and give your all for the club. So every year is the same. You you're terrified of pre season because you know what lies ahead. Having having had a few cheeky takeaways off your you know off peak, but you know once you get back in and and you do them nasty runs and you you get stuck into those serious hard work and you get the feel for the ball again. As time progresses, you, you start to get that electricity flowing through you and, and the excitement really starting to get a buzz around the ground. And I hope it's the same for every single player because you're now looking at a perfect opening fixture against Linfield and it's an opportunity to, to make a bit of a stamp, you know, a wee bit of a mark on the, on the league and, and let people know that we haven't gone away, that we're a, a fantastic side with great players and show what we're fully capable of. So really, really looking forward to it. Are we out of incentive, incentive call with fans all being well but going to be back in the stadium? How difficult was that last year? Maybe just for large parts of the season without supporters. I'd say it was it, it, it was quite impacting, you know, but not just for us, for everybody. You know, Seaview is quite close knit. It's um, all the supporters are close to the pitch. It's not a huge capacity, but when it's full, it's electric and. And it can really be a 12th man. The supporters are always amazing and they give you that extra boost. But that's the same for every single club. They'll say the same thing. So just for, probably for the, the nature of the game, it was a bit disappointing over the last year, you know, between no supporters, a bit of a stop start and, of course, COVID running right through clubs, and through players and things that happen. So hopefully a wee bit of normality and people can get back to really enjoying the game, both players, staff and, and of course, the supporters to get back to a wee bit of you know, how it used to be and how it should be, you know, a full crowd and everyone's cheering each other on and that great pantomime banter and, you know, all the all the abuse in the away fan, that's what it's all about, it's you know. When you think about it, it definitely is. Obviously, Paul, we, we started off talking about this is your testimonial year and it's, and it's, and it's probably a, a thanks from the club, of, you know, if nothing else, in, in terms of the service that you've, you've, you've given and those special nights, as we said, but... What's the plan for this year in the testimonial? Maybe you can talk us through some of the dates that's, that's maybe coming up. I know they're not concrete yet, but maybe some of the activities that we're, we're going to be taking. Sure. So, obviously, our next one is uh, on the 5th of September. We are having a golf day. Um, so, 
you know, if anyone's interested, by all means, just get in touch with uh, the appropriate persons. You can obviously find it on social media, on Facebook, etc. Or obviously through the club. Um, but 5th of September at Carrick Fergus Golf Club. Uh, it's been a great response already. And, of course, we've been very blessed to be getting quite a few um, sponsors for each hole. So, again, it's a great opportunity for anyone who wants to get involved to if they want to sponsor a hole and get obviously their, their business advertised, it'll be well documented across uh, Crusaders Football Club and, and out on social media through the um, through the, our, our Facebook page as well for the testimonial page. So really, really looking forward to it. A lot of players playing, a lot of old legends playing, um, and a couple of Irish League legends, a couple of Northern Ireland legends. So a nice nice mixture of, um, of talent and lack of talent, including the gaffer who will certainly put a stamp on the matter and probably look to win it um, so really looking forward to it to see who turns up and who's digging a few holes and a few, around the course so good place to, a good place to start Paul what, what's your golf skill set like how you, can, you, can you play do you play do you have a handicap <laughs> oh no just no um, I went through a spell like probably every single player in, in the world goes through a spell of trying to play golf some achieve that success and manage to actually really perform really well. Others break a lot of clubs. I certainly fall into the latter of the two. So I think once I ran out of clubs, I called it a day. So the opening <laughs> ceremony, you're standing on the tee box. Obviously, you've got all being well, these you know, 18 or 19 four balls behind you. You're hitting the first shot. Is that the plan? You're going to open ceremony, Paul Healy's going to tee off the first, par four, straight down the middle? Or I'd say if it's possible to hit backwards, I would, I would, I would bet on me hitting backwards. <laughs> so if you want to see that, by all means, come along. Um, yeah, look, we have, we have a few cracking four balls. You know, there's been a fantastic response actually within the club as well. Pretty much every player's involved. Who are we looking out for those players? Who's the dark horses? Maybe who's the king golfers? Right, you have a few. You definitely have um, Aidan Wilson, yes. who plays off a very, very good Single handicap. Cover, yeah. Yep. You have a few dark horses. I'd say Philly Laurie's in there. Right. Billy Joe Burns loves a game of golf. Um, he loves a game or no, he, lo he loves a game, he can play. He, can play. he right. keeps it quiet, but he can play. Um, and surprisingly, a few young lads who have just joined us, Brandon Doyle, Johnny Fraser, are very, very capable. Very capable. So there's already a wee bit of um, abuse going around the club. They're a wee bit of arguing to and fro, trying to play mind games to see who's going to default there and who's going to you know, prevail. So a, a good bit of crack going on to see who's going to achieve things. And... Uh, It'll be a good competition. The players will certain, certainly be looking to win, as is their natural instincts, and um, we'll see who see who performs well. So hopefully, Paul, on the fifth of September, obviously at Carrick Fergus Golf Club, the plan for for us is to, to get some get some footies drawn up. I know that you're keen to spend the day and, and, and be present and go around and maybe not play all the holes, but maybe hit a few of the par three, a couple of drives, maybe in the longer holes. But we're going to go around, going to ask you some questions, look back in your career, but also be a nice chance for you to, to meet and, and mix with the fans on that, on that event. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, I would happily play the golf, but I think it's quite important to show your respect and appreciation for everyone involved. So by all means, we are certainly planning for myself to go around uh, with a couple of others and we'll certainly have a wee bit of fun um, trying to put a couple of the... Uh, the favourites off and try and get a wee bit of a, an underdog winner but um, no it should be a great event we'll have a bit of a laugh we'll go around certain meet and greets and um, hopefully everyone has a fantastic day Carvery on afterwards for everybody as well which would be a lovely wee touch for everyone after the game and hopefully we'll make a really good day of it fingers crossed the weather stays really nice and we can have a good day Yes, well, Paul, well, thanks very much for joining us. We, we're really excited for the golf day as the, as the first step. And so we know there's some events after that, but most importantly is to try and get as many people to the golf event as possible. So thanks very much for joining us and look forward to seeing you then. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.